Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon us. We thank you for this time in the Word. As we go into the Deuterocanonical section of, of the Sacred Scriptures, um, the Second Canon, may we be uh, impressed with your power to forgive, to set free, to marry, to bring us forth into the glory of God. Thank you for this Word. In Jesus' name we receive because the Father is the giver, and the Bride is the receiver. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I said that at the wedding today. The church was packed. Wow. Uh, it was full from top to bottom. And I said, the man is the giver, the woman is the receiver. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I gave them good stuff, sister. And then I put a Gladwin and Simi's picture. Said, Do you want to look like this? A few years they from now, they go, yes. no. They said, yes. They said, oh, what a picture. Oh, yes. what a Now, I have to tell you we're on Raphael. I gave you the five, I gave you the outline of Raphael, what we're engaged in last week. It's the 8th century BC. I showed you where the um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No I showed you where the um, the um, corporal works of mercy started, right? Yes. Everybody see that? Yep. Yes. Everybody see where the corporal works of mercy are? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So um, and um, the father is whom? What's his name? Tobias. The father's name. Tobit, and it's the son What's the same as Tobias? What does Tobit mean, Brother Peter? God is good. God is good. Amen. All right, everybody say Tov. Tov. When God is really pleased with you, what are you? Tov. Mea Tov. All right, everybody turn to the person next and say, You are. You are. Mea Tov. Mea Tov. You are. You are. Mea Tov. Alright, you are. All right, if you go all the way down to verse number, chapter five of Tobit. Um, again, if you, you if you talk to Protestants, they don't have this in their Bible. Okay, just just so you uh, know that. All right, verse eight. And he said to him, Go and do not delay. So he went and said to his father, I have found someone to go with me. All right, now. But you have somebody to go with you because the journeys were always very dangerous. dangerous. You would always need on your journey a guide. And God has given angels to be your guide. Amen? Amen. Do you ask for them? Today we, we had the guide from Yerushalayim, from Yeriko to Yerushalayim. And that was a very extremely dangerous road to travel. Why? Because they would go around stuff like this, and people would wait around the, the corner and yeah. So, um, that's why it's very, very dangerous. You would never basically go alone. I always right. think of Mary going from, uh, to see Elisheva, and I think the obvious is obvious. She did not go alone. She was too young, and she had about a week's travel. So she went, and of course we know, she went with angels. Now when Mary encountered Gabriel, and again, I haven't, if you want me to do it, I'll do it, of course. But we haven't spent a lot of time on Gabriel because you know the story so, so well. We did Daniel's understanding of, of Gabriel. So we've done Michael, we've done Gabriel, and well, now we're doing Raphael. So if you, if you put a little note there, journeys require angels walking with you. How many like that? Yeah. Okay. A angels. Now, you, you mentioned guardian angels. Guardian angels are mentioned in Matthew 18, verse 10. Matthew 18, 10. Everybody see that? Matthew 18, 10, the guardian angels. Everybody know that? Where the little ones, uh, the, they, the angels do two things. They worship God, and they do what? Guys. They worship. Mm -hmm. Now, an interesting thing about your praises, <coughs> when angels worship with you, the Holy Spirit just was telling me this. Your praises go on forever. Does everybody know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I'm afraid some of us will go before God and your praises won't even be in there. Because you don't praise. Amen? Except when you're in Florida, you bounce off them. So I hope all of our praises are there. Amen. Are your praises there, sister? Does he sing? Can you see who does he sing? He doesn't sing. Oh my. Alright, everybody see that in Matthew 18, 10? Yes. Alright, back with me to Tobit. First, I found someone to go with me. He called him to me that I may learn to what tribe he belonged. What were the tribes? The two tribes. What were the tribes? No. The twelve tribes, right. Oh, the twelve. For example, today, when Moses said to the people of Israel, um, because he was getting all the tribes together, in Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, do you remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why would that be a problem with the Samaritans? Because they were right by those two mountains. Mount Gerizim. Well, Moses is calling him and he says, it's not across the sea. What's across the sea? It's the uh, splitting of the splitting of the Red Sea. Red sea. Oh. Did you get that? Wow. You're missing good stuff, sister. No kidding. But, but where is where is it? It's all in your mouth. Did you get all that? You know, you miss good stuff today. what you believe. Amen. I found someone to go with me. He said, call him to me that I may learn to what tribe he belongs, whether he is a reliable man to go with you. Now, there's a whole list in Genesis 49. When you look at Genesis 49, some of the tribes are not reliable. For example, don't go with Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The oldest scripture in the Bible... Sister Mary wants me to go slow, so I'm, I'm hearing myself. The old description in the Bible is Judges 5. There was a woman called B. B, sir. B. Deborah. B. And she tried to rally some of the troops to defend against the, uh, the forces that were attacking her. Those are the tribes you don't go with. So what tribe do you belong to? What tribe would you all want to go with? Judah. Judah, Judah. because that's Jesus' tribe. And by the way, it's the fourth named tribe. Reuben? Reuben. Right. He was no good incest. And he started the sandwich business. <laughs> <laughs> There's Reuben, Simeon, Simeon. and Levi. Uh, you pronounce it Levi, but pronounce yeah, Levi in Levy. Hebrew. Right. Levi, why don't you want to go with Levi? No inheritance. Yeah. And if it was Levi, he has to be under a uh, a different kind of protection, right? Mm -hmm. So the Levites, they were the altar servers. That's right. why right. they couldn't touch the man to death. Are you getting all this stuff? And so that's why, what's the importance of the tribe? I want to check out your reputation. Now, what do you do when you see people all the time? What's the first thing to say? What is your name? Mm -hmm. Then they say, where do you come from in Italy? Do you remember all those things they say? <laughs> <laughs> How many have ever been asked where you come from? Yeah. Yeah. The first thing, what's your name? And where are you from? Mm -hmm. So here's the same thing. We have, but but it's, it's, it's where are you from? Even in the book of John, they said to Jesus, where are you from? Right. Amen. Can anything good come from Pisca from, um, <laughs> from Nazareth? A lot of good from Yes. Call to me that I may learn to what tribe he belongs, where he's a reliable man to go with you. Verse 9. So Tobias invited him. He entered and they greeted each other. How would they greet each other? With a kiss. Kiss a room. Verse 10. Then Tobit said to him, My brother, to what tribe and family do you belong? Here we go again. Tell me. But he answered, Are you looking for a tribe and a family or a man whom you will pay with you? So what tribe did this angel come from? Do angels come from tribes? No. 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 Hmm. Somebody say, hmm. Mm. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. But he answered, Are you whom you will pay to go with your son? 
And Tobit said, I would like to know, my brother, your people and your name. Hmm. Now, so he wanted to know the tribe. And, uh, what's the name of the tribe? My <laughs> We want to know the tribe. And we want to know the Shem. The Shem. All right, give us tribe and Shem. Because you only can travel with family. Ma'am, I'm looking for Are these pens at work? They do not supply good business here. All right, now, what you need to do when you look at the tribe and the Shem is because I need to know if I can be redeemed. Does everybody remember what it means to be redeemed? You have a kinsman walking with you. That's why Jesus became one of us. So that he could walk with us. Are you getting this? Wow. So that's called, in Hebrew, remember, you all know that, a goel. Can you read the red? Yes. They didn't get me a darker color. There's nothing under there? No. So. I could No, I, I, I'll complain to the board later. All right. If anyone wants to vote, let's see Larry. No, no, that's right. <laughs> you sure? Okay. Are, are you looking for a tribe or family? And Tobin said, I should like to know my brother. He replied, verse 12. I am Azariah, the son of the great Ananias. Now, Ananias is the healing power. Here comes the redemption again. Okay, so what am I going to say? I am Azariah. How to say that? God is my help. 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 I am the son of... I am Azariah. So how would you say that in Hebrew, sister? Ania Azariah. A-N-I, Ani-I. Because there's no verb to be. Ani Azariah. Ever say Ani Azariah. Amen. Now, from their birthing names would eventually be the name which you're all very familiar with, Lazarus. Yes. Have you ever heard of that one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Azariah. You might make uh, the Deuterocanonical section in Daniel 3, Azariah in the fire. Do you remember such stories? Mm -hmm. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. And what happened when Azariah was in the fire, Sister Marie? Oh, they saw an angel. Angel in there. Yeah. What was the name of the angel? Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord, one like the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 3. Mm -hmm. More angels. So now, what was the angel doing? Saving from life. Now, I believe everybody here has encountered an angel in your life, besides your wife, of course. And when you, you do that, he, he protects you from a death. Because right now, the other angel called the Satan wants you dead. And go to the cooker without meeting Christ. That's why he's in the second heaven looking at you. And to destroy you and Piscataway. Yes? So, do angels always come as man's angel? Yes. And now there's a new interesting phenomenon among some people. They're seeing aliens now. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. The pilots are reporting in the air, they see yeah. strange circular things flying around. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And some Americans have reported being kidnapped by bubblehead men. Not bobblehead, bubblehead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Green with a big vein in the stick of your, the top of your head. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Interesting going on. Yes. Is there life on other planets? An interesting discussion. Yes. And he replied, I'm Azariah, the son of the great Ananias, one of your relatives. Okay, underline there, there's the Goel. Goel means kinsman. And that's in the book of Ruth. Ruth. You ever hear the book of Ruth? Yes. Verse 13. Then Tobit said to him, you are welcome, my brother. Do not be angry with me because I tried to learn your tribe and your family. 
You are a relative of mine. Put in the word go el. Wow. Of good and noble lineage. Yeah. For I know Ananias and Yatham, the sons of the great Shemamiah. What well, Shemamiah means the name of God. God. Yes, right. When we went together to Yerushalayim to worship and offer the firstborn of our flocks. Now, that is that is required is the firstborn for what? Redemption. That, that takes us back to giving God the best. And the prophet Malachi, you have to offer God the best. That's why your tithe is never what's left over. It's the first. You should always give God from the top, not from the bottom. And what do they do in the prophet Malachi chapter 1? They took and they said, let's give God blind animals. You want to laugh? Three-legged ones. Let's offer them for a sacrifice. And that's why I get a little annoyed when you're going out for your Dunkin' every day and you can't give God a cup of coffee in the collection. What's wrong with that picture? Amen? Amen. Alright, just good stuff. So they're, they're coming now to worship at Yerushalayim. They did not go astray in the era of our brethren. My brother, you come of good stock, but tell me the wages I have to pay to you. A drop in a day and expenses for yourself as for my son. And besides, I'll add to your wages if both you turn safe and sound. Isn't that great? He gets money. If you make it, I'll give you more money. Yeah. What if you don't make it? You're dead. Goodbye. What are you going to do with the money? It's gone. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Then, so they agreed on these terms. Then he said to Dubai, get ready for a journey. Underline that. This is, this is what the angel does. It gets us ready for the journey. When you look at the Bible carefully, Mary gets immediately the angel Gabriel. He disappears. Now remember I told you about a thousand times. There is, there is something called parallelism. Mm -hmm. What's in the beginning is in the, the end. end. Mm -hmm. Here's Mary and who else do we have? Gabriel. Right. Then we have Jesus and the angels of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens here is Gabriel disappears. Why? Because the journey now has to come from an inside out. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the angels disappear. For those who have seen he's not there, the journey has to come from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So here comes a parallelism so we have angels here, an angel here in the beginning, angels here. On Christmas, you know, we have angels. I, I, you see all these angels popping in? So, they are, they are very, very explosive. Get ready for this journey and good success to you both. So his son made the preparations for the journey, and his father said to him, go with this man. Now underline that, there's Raphael. What's he called? This man, because he doesn't have a what? Name. A name. Now, what God does is he reveals the name afterwards. Why afterwards? Because when you know the name, you know the mission. And what do they have to do is learn the mission. Because if all of a sudden I said to you, this is a, you're going to meet demonic presences. You know, would you, what would happen to you if I said, this man's going to help you through demonic presences? What, what would you, what would you do? Would you be a little afraid? Yes. Yeah. Amen. So how many know your journey, if everybody knew your journey ahead, would you want to walk it? So God gives me Raphael to say, walk it with. Do you understand Raphael's role? Walk it with me, Raphael. Walk it with me. Whoa. 
Amen. How many have been in scary places? I confess to you, many times on my journey with the Lord in foreign countries and in a place called the Bronx. <laughs> my favorite Christian song was Lions and Tigers and Bears. When I got into places and I felt very much alone, like my first word was, Mommy! <laughs> Have we ever had that word before? And I'm like, okay, don't panic. What are you going to do? And you hear this little going, woo, 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 woo. And I'm like, oh. And then I get into the Bronx, and I'm going to preach at a prayer meeting. And everything is, seems to be blown out. Glass everywhere. And every five seconds I'm checking to see if the tires are on my car. <laughs> but when I got into the room, the place was a huge basement, packed to the gilders. You could not get another person in there. I preached in about this much of space. Wow. That's how close everybody was. It was so crowded. And I said, Could somebody go please check on that car outside? <laughs> So I, I was scared just kind of walking through, but I don't say everybody thinks I'm tough because I go to the gym every day. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the journey. Now, no one told me by going there that would be the case, amen? Because yeah. I might think twice. And I just got invited, I got invited to go to the United Arab Emirates. And they said, you cannot look handsome like that. You gotta put a shika 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 outfit on. <laughs> and my mother said to me, Don't go, you'll go back in a body bag. I said, Saint Anthony is my friend. He wanted to come back in a body bag. So you don't know the journey. You can't know the journey. But on the journey it's all those things. Are you ready for your journey? Yes. How many are ready for the rest of your journey? Yes. St. Raphael yes. is getting us ready for the rest of the journey. Now, underline that. You ever see it there? This man. Now, watch this. This is, is this really good? Yes. Turn to person next to you. This is really good. This is really good. There's someone else that says, this man. Paul does. In 2 Corinthians 12, he says, I know this man. And what was he saying? He had an out-of-body out experience of heaven in 2 Corinthians 12. He went up to the third heavens. So notice they call him this man. And notice, if we read 2 Corinthians 12, we would never... Of course, within the context, we know it's St. Paul. But notice... When you're on a heavenly journey of sorts, you don't even say the person. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. But then he says to us, Go with this man. God who dwells in heaven will prosper your way. And may his angel attend you. Hello? Whoa. Now, we get another purpose of angels. They attend you. Let me give you another example of an attending angel. There is a man in the Bible called Gideon. You ever hear of him? Yes. yes. Gideon. The Hebrew word Gideon means champion. When he walks out because his half-brothers are bothering him that Abraham had a half-son, or a real son, you know, and then came half brothers to later on. Genesis 25. They're called Midianites. The Midianites were attacking them. And so he sneaks outside from his cave, where I got one. He sneaks outside, and who's making him an Italian dinner? An angel. <laughs> So angels take care of preparations of attending to you. So angels attend to you. So if you, have, you see that right there? Yes. So we have another interest that angels do. They're, they're attendees. Mm. Right? Amen. Yeah. Are you getting this? Yes. 
Yes. See what Raphael does? Yes. So Raphael needs to know how to serve. When you study very carefully the Bible, when all these angels, they're in there at key moments. Gabriel, I told you, disappears for one main reason. Mary absolutely believes the journey. She believes that the journey is going to be well, I'm going to be attended to. So, you know what Gabriel said? Out of here. <laughs> and then and I told you on Luke 24, Jesus disappears because they believed he was risen. When the father said, when, when Tobit was speaking to his son, okay, and he said, uh, you, and he's referring to uh, Raphael, okay, you are a relative of mine of good and noble lineage, for I used to know Ananias, or Ananias and Jathan, the sons of the great Shemaiah. He's saying they are sons of God, my God, <coughs> sons of my God. So I believe he knew they were his angels. You do? He said, yes, I do believe that. Because, uh, you know, he just goes on and on to say how, how, how he was rewarded and helped and how they went to God and how they, you know, offered their offering. And the very word Ananias means the blessing toward the journey, too. Yeah, yeah. and what does Jathan mean, do you know? Jathan? Jathan. I'll look it up in a minute. All right, so Ananias is on the journey with you, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. Now, God who dwells in heaven That's who he, that will prosper your way. There you go. So, when we have an angel walking with us, your way is already prosperous. I think that's good. So on, on, some, on some level, he knew that this was an angel or yes, of yes. God, sent by God. Let's find out what happens. Okay. So they both went out, verse number, they both went out and departed, and the young man's dog was with him. <laughs> <laughs> but Anna's mother began to weep. Now, what does Anna mean, the grace of God? Right. Verse 17. Began to weep and said to Tobit, Why have you sent our child away? Is he not the staff of our hands as, as, as it goes in and out before us? Now, going in and out, if you box that in, is a shepherding term. Mm. Right, yeah. Let me give you an example where it's used. Jesus uses it in um, John 10, mm -hmm. when they go in and out. You got the picture? Mm -hmm. It's the shepherds and the sheep. Mm -hmm. So if you box that in there, that's a shepherding term. Everybody see it in there? Mm -hmm. So the, the shepherding term is, um, and, and notice there they call him the staff of our hands. Mm -hmm. Now in the Bible, I want you all to say this, my children are my blessing. My, my children, children are my blessing. blessing. Even though they drive you. Did they ever drive you nuts? Mm -hmm. Did you, how many ever had kids yet? And they started to become your parents. <laughs> yes. It hasn't happened yet? Yes. And they really do believe they know more than you. Yeah. They really believe, they don't believe you're too bright. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. They don't believe you're too bright. And they believe that they are definitely smarter than you. But notice what Anna says, the grace of God. Amen. Now, can, can you hear her name in, in Hebrew? How do, you, how do you say her name? Johanna. So there's the Johanna. Right. Do not add money to money, but consider it rubbish as compared to our child. There's Psalm 120. Seven. Your children are gold. I told the couple getting married today, when you have your 17 children, you keep going. <laughs> and then I was getting blessing them, I said, with your 25 children, they went, wait, are you changing numbers? <laughs> so everything else is rubbish. For the life that is given to us by the Lord is enough for us. That's called, by the way, in Hebrew, dai dai dayeno. Wow. How many remember Dayeno? You say that at Passover. Yes, yes. That would be enough for us. 
If God just gave me one David, one Melissa, right. that would be enough. One Jason, one Michael, one Michelle, that would be enough. One, one, one John, one Michael, Amen. that would be enough. Amen? Amen. Are you getting this? So notice now the value of the children. So if, if you're going to have your, your child, how many know there's never been a president in the United States who was an only child? Really? Huh? I read that on Snapple today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> You know, the, the little covers you read. Yeah. So, it's, it's really important that you have family. Amen? So now Anna's saying, look at my family. Good stuff? Yes. Now, uh, the Lord is enough for us. Verse 20. And Tobit said, don't worry, my sister. He will return safe and sound, and your eyes will see him. So now, because they're walking with somebody, and they're going to get through. Amen? Now, I'll put a big start by verse 21. Here's Raphael. A good angel will go with him. His journey will be a success. Now, the moment you say, Sister, may the blood of the Lamb, the Saba oath of angels, and the mantle of Mary, it's fine. Say you had a daughter in Boston. Do you put the blood of the Lamb over her? Yes. The Saba oath of angels, and the man, she's fine. You cannot call upon God. Did you ever worry about those interesting kids you got? And you can't send them back? Just put the Sabaoth on them. Sabaoth is the host of angels. Did you ever pray for your new granddaughter? All the time. All the time. Okay, amen. Now, a good angel. Now, notice that he says there, how do you say good? Oh. Hmm. Somebody say, hmm. We have Tobias. We have Tobit. And we now we have, oh, this place. And we have Tob. We have Tob. Okay? So we have Tob. Now, why do they call it good angels? Because there are bad angels. And guess who we're going to meet? A bad one. Okay. His name is going to be Amma. This is Kennedy asked me what his name means last. It means the wrath. And you know what his name really means? Why were all these people going to be fine dropping dead when you married somebody? Did you ever meet marry somebody you thought you were going to drop dead with? Mm -hmm. Here's the reason. Amadeus means the lust comes mm -hmm. out. That's his name? Amadeus? Yes. Lust. Oh. Interesting, huh? Yeah. So now, if circle there, the good angel will go with him. His journey will be successful. He will come back and say, so she stopped weeping. I just got to know this for me to stop weeping. Everything's going to be okay. Who started weeping and weeping and weeping and thought he was an angel? Mary Magdalene, John 20. And when we, when we find out about her weeping, it comes to the point where it's called crocodile tears. Absolute crocodile tears. Amen? Chapter 6. Good stuff? <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs> Alright. Now, as they proceeded on their way, they came evening to the Tigris River. Where's the Tigris River, everybody? Iraq. Iraq. And they camped there. So where were they before? Yeah, they're in that area. When you look at the area of, um, go back to verse number 5. 
you could see um, that's the area they would be in. So the Tigris River. Now, I told you about a million times they crossed a river called the Euphrates. How many remember the Euphrates? Yeah. The Euphrates River will lead people into a place called Armageddon. The Euphrates River, when our friend Avram was in the land, he crossed this river, and crossing the river would be called Ibaru. And then we get to name Hebrews. So, the Jews, the word Hebrews mean crossing the river. Hmm. But now we're coming to another area where they were crossing, and the name of the river is called the what? The Tigris. Everybody say Tigris. Tigris. Right, make sure you pronounce the name correctly. Amen? Do I hear amen? Amen. Now, again, let me show you the Tigris. It's first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis. You're the only ones on your block that know this. Genesis 2, again, I keep going to that area. We believe the Garden of Eden was surrounded by these four river sources. You heard me quote a million times verse 10, but I'm not going to go with that one today. I'll go to verse 11. Everybody with me? Genesis 2, 11. Mm -hmm. The name of the first is called the P, the P, Pishan. Pishan. What happened at the Pishan, it flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. So there is gold, because what's in the beginning, when you go to heaven, what's heaven going to look like? Gold. 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 Next, the gold of the land is Dov. What is Dov? Bedellium. And onyx stone. So it's really like bright, isn't it? Yes. The name of the second word is Gihon. What, what kind of spring is going to come from Solomon when he gets anointed as Gion king? Springs. At the bottom of Gion the Gihon yes. Springs. Right. Hello. <coughs> Are you getting this? And the one which flows around the whole land of Kush. And the name of the third river is Tigris. So now, when we hit the Tigris River, where are we going back, brothers and sisters? And it flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. So if you underline the Euphrates there, that's where we get the word crossing the river. And that's where we get the word Hebrews. Interesting when you just read a bunch of rivers, huh? So now in the book of Tobit, what river are we back to? The Tigris. So, what's happening there? Who's walking along those lands at this time? Raphael. Hmm. What are we going to be seeing? Hmm, a new birth thing going on, right? So who's going to be walking across the Euphrates? Hmm, this already happened, by the way, right? Mm -hmm. Sister. Yes. Are you seeing all this? Amen? Amen. All right, back with me to chapter 6 of Tobit. Then the young man went down to wash himself. Verse 2, officially from the river and would have swallowed the young man. And the angel said, catch the fish. So the man seized the fish and threw it up on the land. The angel said, to cut open the fish and take the heart and the liver and the gold and put them away safely. Right. <laughs> so the young man did as the angel told him and they roasted and ate the fish. So they cleaned him out and they kept the other part safely. Angels of God have a healing remedy for you all the time. 
They know the whole journey. So already, what's going to happen to that fish? Now, there's an interesting fish story that you never heard anybody preach on, and it's in the Matthew. You never heard anybody preach on it. It's true. Never. It's in the Gospel of Matthew. The coin. The coin. You never heard anybody preach on that. So if you hold your spot and travel with me to Matthew, right? You never heard anybody preach on it. You're all looking at me like you're trying to figure out if you, ha you haven't. Which I don't even think I've heard you preach on it. I preached on it. Did you? What's your? So I give you good stuff. <laughs> Matthew 17. So we have the story of a fish. How do you say fish, everybody? Fish. Fish. Thank you. <laughs> Dear, it's fish. Do not give him dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> Ichthys. Ichthys. What is Ichthys? Where is it? Where is it? Ichthys. Where is it? Spell it. I C H I C Y S. I C H T Y. Ichthys. 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 Okay, Amen. Amen. Now, did you find it in Matthew 17? Yeah, we're looking for it. Okay, 17. What's 24? It's the end. Now, how many ever heard that preach time before? Nobody. Isn't that amazing? There's parts of Matthew or parts of the New Testament nobody ever preached on before. And can I tell you another part they never preached on before? And I always preach on it. You always hear me mention it. They never preached on Nain. On the 27 birds. Yeah, yes, it's that's, right. that's, that's why Peter had a fit when he couldn't take a picture. Yeah. Take Matthew 17, 27. And I'm taking Susan with me to Italy. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to take, she's going to show us Padre Pio where he received the stigmata. And I'll show you where Susan grew up as a little girl. And I'll show you the high school she went in. Wow. And you'll find a shuffle there. And I'll show you the confessional Susan was in with Padre Pio. Okay, now, all right, ready? Fish, Are you getting good stuff? Yes. All right. Now, everybody within chapter 17? Yes. Yes. He says there, When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the half shekel went up to Peter, Does your teacher pay the tax? He said, Yes. And when he came home, Jesus spoke to him first, saying, What do you think, Simon? Now, notice he doesn't call him Kepha now, it's back to Simon. Yes. Because he's learned to be a disciple. From whom do the kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their sons or from others? He said, from others. Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Should Jesus be paying a tax? No. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Amen. You should be putting it into his coffers. And by the way, you will at the end of time. <laughs> and no linguini. The sons are free, however, not to give offense to them. Go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for you. Why? Because how much did you have to pay? A half a shekel. So Jesus said, there will be a shekel in there. That's wow. for both of us. Yes. Wow. So now, Peter is on the journey with Jesus. Now here's an interesting teaching for us. When you're on the journey with Jesus, even the criticism they lodge against you is taken care of. Mm 
Amen. 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 Even the temple tax. And the temple tax goes all the way back to what chapter, Sister Marie? Exodus. Right, Exodus 35. Thank you very much. Mighty notes. <laughs> Exodus 35. Everybody was required to pay a half a shekel. Wow. Now, what, does the, what do the angels do? They guide you in, even if I'm following you, everything is taken care of. Wow. Do you know what a church law is? They've got to take care of me to the day I die. You know what church law is right now in the United States? I don't have to worry about my, uh, my payment for my Medicare or whatever. Peter does, but not me. <laughs> Amen. They gotta take care of me. Amen. I mean, uh, twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars a year. I'm set. <laughs> Amen. So now, notice on the journey, what does the angel do? We'll take care of the journey and all your needs. Now, what does what does Raphael do? Take all the other stuff because that's going to be the remedy mm -hmm. to heal you later on. That's right, his father. Yes. <laughs> Are you getting all this? Yes. Wow. Now, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right, back with me to Tobit 6. Is this good stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The angel said, cut open the fish and take the heart, verse 4, and go and put them away safely. So the young man did as the angel told him, and they roasted and ate the fish. Mmm, delish. <laughs> and they both continued on their way until they came near to Ekbatana. Everybody say Ek. Ekbatana. Ek and also that could be the Rages back in uh, chapter oh, 1, verse 5. 5, verse 5. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azariah, now, does he know he's an angel? No. 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 He calls him brother. Yeah. Right. What he's doing there is he's coming up with such a phenomenal love. Because the greatest commandment is that you love your brother. Right. Leviticus 19 wow. is the second part of loving your neighbor as yourself. So no, notice right there, he's called brother. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting about that is you don't hear that when you read the sacred scriptures, brother, a lot. Mm -hmm. That's why I love to call you brother and sister. That's why I don't forget to call brother Peter or brother Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. So when I see brother Peter's mother, I said, that's... Mrs. Brother Peter. Mother Brother Peter. Mother Brother Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> now, what the angel forms with our friend Tobias. Tobias is a brother relationship right. to him. Right. That's very interesting what Raphael has allowed it to be afforded, that we can walk with God with him in a brother relation. So what does he say? Or how do you say that in Hebrew, sister? Brother? Ah. Ah, Azariah. Wow. That's brother Azariah? Yes. Ever say ah. Ah. Ah, Azariah. Then he says to us there, um, <coughs> Brother Azariah, of what use is this liver and the heart and the gall of fish? He replied, as the heart and liver, if a demon or evil spirit gives trouble to anyone, you make a smoke from the man or woman, and that person will never be troubled again. Because where, where does Satan like to go into? People. The heart in the Bible is the, and the liver are your center of emotions. How many have ever met somebody that's an emotional wreck? <laughs> yes. 
Now, what happens if your heart or your liver go? You die. You're a gunner, baby. Now, spiritually speaking, what does Satan attack? The liver and the heart. Yes. How do you pray spiritual prayers over them? Cover their liver and their heart. Wow. Now, what does Satan aim for you right now? He goes for your mind, Ephesians chapter 6, with arrows. But also, too, how many would like to do a healing service now on your emotions? Mm -hmm. Some of you are emotional wrecks. Mm -hmm. Nobody in a million years would want to marry you like that. We say in Brooklyn, forget about it. It's emotional. How many of you have ever met emotional people before? Mm -hmm. And you don't, what do you, what's our answer for them? Take your pills. Go to a doctor. We don't know how to handle it. Now, if you circle the word there, what happens is when Satan, the devil, sees these with the smoke, guess what? He can't go after their emotions. <coughs> If I can't get you to become an emotional wreck, and I have you thinking solidly in the spirit, I can't get to you. How many people do you know have been an emotional wreck? Would you like me to introduce you to them? No. <laughs> <laughs> So it's the heart and the liver. Are you seeing this, sister? As the heart and the liver, if a demon or an evil spirit gives trouble to any one of you, you make a smoke from these before the man or woman, and that person will never be troubled again. Verse 8. And as the goal, anointed with a man who has white films in his eyes, and he'll be cured. Anybody ever see a person with white films? That's not a pleasant looking thing, isn't it? They don't look, they look like a zombie. So, what's already happening right now? We're already bringing the cure, because when you're on a journey, those who receive the journey will receive the blessings that you had on the journey to set them free also. Push the button. When you're on the journey, God will reveal to you many things. When you go home, you will be able to help those with problems. How many have ever been on a retreat before? How many have ever heard a Bible teaching before? And you're thinking, that's exactly what she needs to hear. Mm. Yeah. I wish she was here. Yeah. Mm. And then you go home because you've learned something and says, let's do this. Amen? Amen. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. yeah. So now notice we're on this journey and already we're getting a healing. Sister. When you're on this Bible journey, you're already getting healing for the problems that are coming up. Are you getting ready for that? Yeah. Then you're really learning the word. Sister. Very good. You're getting it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now, so here we have, put in there, verse number 8. Raphael as the healer. You see where the healing comes from? See where it says he'll be cured? Yes. A lot of background tonight, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, now, let's get to the angel Raphael. Good stuff? Yes. Good Are you enjoying this, Miss Simeon? Yes. <coughs> All right. Now, here comes Raphael. When he entered Medea and was already approaching Ecbatana, Raphael said to the young man, Brother Tobias, hello, brother. Mm How -hmm. do I say brother in Hebrew? Ah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
here I am. Now, here I am is a phenomenal expression of saying, I'm totally ready to do God's mm -hmm. will. Let me give you a point on that. Genesis 22, verse 1 and 2, Avram said, here I am. Isaiah chapter 6, he says, here I am, Lord, kick, swish, kick, kick, kick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that song yet? Yes. 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 Here I am now. You are ready to move in the Spirit. So now notice Tobit says, here I am. When you walk with the angels of God, you say, here I am. It gets you ready for everything that's coming. Sister. Yes. Yes. <coughs> now, how many know you're going to need this? Yes. She wants me to go slow so so she could smoke her stogie yes. and take this in. <laughs> because that would already be two chapters done. Right? <laughs> so we're trying to go slow. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Are you in this? All right, Raphael, here we go. Then he, uh, then, uh, he answered, then Raphael said, we must stay this night in the home of Raguel. No. No, no, no. <laughs> he is your relative. Again, another go L. Yes, right. When you go along, that's why they ask, what tribe are you from? Did we get the answer? No. no. Okay. He is your relative, and he has a daughter named Sarah. What does Sarah mean? Princess. This is not the Sarah of Abraham. He has, he has no male heir, no daughter except Sarah, only you as next to kinder, go L. To have before all other men a heretic claim on her. Also it's right for you to inherit the father's possession. See the goel? A goel is somebody that will come, usually a distant relative, and marry you. What, weren't marriages great back then? <laughs> Imagine if Simi said, Here's a guy, now marry him. Who is he? He's got an interesting name, just marry him. Okay? He's a Goel. So, if you read the book of Ruth, there's the Goels, a kinsman. Why? Let, let me back up a little bit and say, the same tribe. Right. Okay? This is not incest or any, please don't think those lines. This is the same tribe. Amen? In other words, now you understand where Paul gets in the book of Corinthians. Marry in the faith. Right. Right. Now for some strange reason, it's allowed to marry outside the faith. Personally, I don't believe in it. I believe you should marry in the faith. Because you don't want to marry somebody who doesn't believe in Christmas. And the real meaning is Jesus. Amen? Amen. I think you want a prayer partner. Do I hear? Amen. 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 Then he says, uh, uh, Brother Azariah, um, verse 11, Also it is right for you to inherit your father's possession. Verse 12, More with a girl is sensible, brave, and very beautiful. I mean, the beauty part gets all of our us guys. <laughs> and her father is a good man. What word is that? Tov. How many times do you hear the word tov? You got that? Tov. Tov. When God made people, he said what? Tov. Me tov. When he made animals, tov. When he made us, he said me tov. When he made, when you got married, he says to Brother Clapman, Sydney is me tov. Psalm. Where over the rainbow. Are you getting this? Now you're going to find out in chapter 13. I don't know if we'll get that far, but you'll probably make me get that far. If we go to chapter 13, just take a peek. This is an exaltation prayer on marriage. Anybody married? Yep. Yes. Say so your husband's called Michael. You can read that prayer to him. Mm -hmm. Blessed be God who lives forever 
and blessed is his kingdom. He afflicts, but he shows mercy. He leads down to Hades and he brings up again. No matter what happens in one vein, he'll take care of us up here. Hmm. Nothing will let us down. Back with me to chapter 6. I just want to show you that. Hmm. Hmm. Verse was that? Chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Oh, thank you. Okay, now back to chapter 6. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azariah, I have heard that the girl has been given to seven husbands. Woo! And that each died in the bridal chamber. Woo! You know what the name of the song was? Lions and Tigers and Tigers. <laughs> what got the guys? What a beautiful woman. Yeah, but you'll be dead in the morning. <laughs> Amen? Wow. Now I'm only a son of my father, as I am afraid that if I go in, I will die. Do you remember a similar story? What are they lacking? They're lacking a fuller understanding of the faith here, aren't right. they? Right. The resurrection. Right. Mm -hmm. What was the problem inside the chamber? Harmful lust. What's the name of this demon that's going to attack? Wrath. Mm -hmm. How many have ever seen somebody very angry? So what did what why are these why are these guys dying? Because what happens is the women become so filled with this demon. And they kill them. So now, how many have ever heard of marriage before? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anybody don't tell me. Please don't tell me. My head is too filled with crazy things already. Please don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't know if there's a person here. Don't tell me. Do not tell me. You got married on your wedding night. You said, don't tell me. I married the wrong person. Don't tell me. Do not tell me. Not my Larry. I mean, my Larry is a gem. My Larry is a gem. So you said... I do. Amadeus is around here. Oh no. <laughs> George and Marianne at St. Antoninus, she said, the morning I woke up after my wedding, I wanted to divorce him. Oh, I said, isn't that great? Oh, my gosh. Amen. Why? Because you weren't taken care of with gentleness. Mm. The man gives, the woman receives. That wasn't what the marriage was about, amen? Mm. So now we have a journey of true marriage. I'm afraid that if I go in, I will die as before those who die, for the demon is in love with her. Underline that, that's the problem with the demon. Mm. It's called lust. You see it right there? Yeah. See the demon of lust? Which was? Now, let's give you a Bible teaching on marriage, which you already know you could teach me. You can never have relations with your spouse <coughs> if there's lust in a person's heart. Who said that? Jesus. Jesus. If you hold <coughs> your spot there and travel with me, here's, here's the demon. See if you can find the demon that you didn't know it was a demon. <coughs> Go with me, please, to Matthew 5. Did you see the demon in there? Matthew 5. <coughs> now, what's going on right now? For each man and woman living together in mortal sin, not married, mm -hmm. or having all their one, two, three, four, five, ten night stands, mm -hmm. they're committing <coughs> serious mortal sin. Do I hear amen? Amen. Now, if you go with me to Matthew chapter 5. Did you find Matthew 5? Yes. I go to verse 28, and there's the demon right there. Did you see it, sister? 
There is everybody who looks at a woman lustfully. Has already committed adultery. Guess how many people I hear confess that? Nobody. <coughs> I, I was on my job, I was looking at her lustfully. That's a sin. Who said it? Jesus. The Lord Jesus. Jesus. The Lord Jesus. <coughs> Amen. Amen. That's what killed them. Wow. Wow. Mm. <coughs> oh, I see. Oh. oh, you see it now? I do, yes. Good. Because the lady next to you will ask for an explanation. Do you, you get it? I get it. Anybody not get it? No, that's the same thing. It's the same evil. It's the same evil. Same evil. That's Asmodeus, yes. Right. That's the spirit. So, what do they want to do? Lust wants to kill you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some of you are married, and you or your spouse, or both, might have had the spirit of lust in you. I meet couples, I, 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 I hear them say to me, a lot. Here's what most of the time the men say to me. My wife does not want to have relations with me. It's, it's always that way. It's never the other way around. Mm -hmm. Can you think why? Mm -hmm. Lust. Lust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. You know, I'm ready tonight. Let's... Yeah. She feels like he's just used and... Yes. Yeah. You're not my wife right now. Mm -hmm. You're an object of my right. lust. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> wow. Yeah, that's horrible. Yes. Yeah. I, I want to go so far as to say we need to guide people in that. But God, yes. how many classes are you going to find? Mm -hmm. None. Do they exist? Mm -hmm. None. Mm -hmm. Do you see what killed them that night? Do you think this is in pre Cana? No. No. <laughs> Are you getting it? Now, I don't want to start trouble. But we're going to do it anyway. And all of you who had your interesting experiences, I just hope and pray that was not your experience. Do not tell me. I just hope that man, that woman, did not do that to you. And if they did, they were inviting Amadeus into your room. And guess what? It was, why did they die? It was forced. It's bad. And so what do you call this? Maybe somewhat of a marital rape. And guess what? You can't say a word because we're married. And who's going to believe that? Do you see this? Do you see this devil? This is one of the most insidious devils you've ever wanted to meet. And who's going to come to the rescue? Raphael. Amen. Oh, Raphael. Amen. 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 Father, um, did she actually kill them? Or Let's did find it? out. Okay. Good stuff? Yeah. I guess. No, she didn't kill them. No, yeah. I, I wanted to take that it's time. The spirit. You got it. Mm -hmm. Now, what would the seven mean? Fullness. Right. I'm in verse... Uh, verse now I only my son, my father, and I'm afraid that if I go, I will die as those before me. Where demon is in love with her. I'm not like, box that in. Everybody see that lust? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he harms no one except those who approach her. So mm -hmm. now what happens mm -hmm. is, you got to come close to me. What do we do? When you touch the fire, you get what? Burn. 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 Now, what is the object of us? Now, the brothers, sisters, are very, very sensitive to your incredible beauty. The young lady got married today, she was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And even, even Max said to me, Father Bill, 
wait to see her dress. <laughs> and I said she she, she was wow. she was stunning. Mm. One whoa. Wow. But she only gets to wear it once. once. Whoa. Now, so what are we men attracted to? We're attracted to the beauty. And guess what happens because we're attracted to your incredible beauty? You're not going to want to hear this. We might marry you for the wrong reason. How many would like to have found out you were married because you were just so beautiful? Now when you're young like that, you think, of course I want to be beautiful. <laughs> So now I fear that I die and bring the lives of my father and my mother to the grave in sorrow because what do they got to say? They got to say what? I need to, he was the only child. And now they have no other son to bury them because remember, we learned that we're learning the Corporal Marks of Mercy in chapter, chapter 1. And what do they do? They bury very quickly. But the angel said to him, do not remember the words which your father commanded you to, to take a wife from among your own people. Don't you remember them? Now listen to me, brother, for she will become your wife and do not worry about the demon. So now we have spiritual warfare. Do you want, what's her name? Sarah. What does Sarah mean? Princess. What's the other H? It's from God's name. Do you remember? The first Sarah now goes all the way back. Now, did you remember we went all the way back? We went to the Euphrates. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Now we go all the way back to the first Sarah. And if you're Jewish minded, you know one thing about. By the way, this you cannot get this in Christian circles. This is totally Jewish. What I'm going to say to you. Did you hear me? Totally Jewish. Did you hear me? Totally, totally Jewish. Jewish. The Jews believed Sarah was almost the next thing to the Immaculate Conception. Mm. Wow. Mm. Is that amazing? Yeah. Now the Catholics have always uh, always preached that since the 1950s and down through the corridor of time, and now the Jews believe it. When I heard that, I went. That's why Abram got the H in his name. That's right, sister. Yeah. When he married. So now Sarah. notice, because this is this is Sarah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, what does Sarah mean? Princess, princess, yes, but she is the beauty on the inside. Are you getting this? So when Larry married Marie in Brooklyn, and he says, he wrote it in his memoirs, Marie is beautiful on the inside. Show you a and she can make Italian sausage and do the do the and bolognese. And he says, I love her with the inside. That's what Raphael says now. Take her for the inside. It won't happen to you. And there's Larry as he walks in now. Larry, we're just talking about you getting married in Brooklyn. <laughs> and by the way, after you two left, the church collapsed. Anyway, so... Alright, <laughs> amen. Are you getting this? Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> now listen to me, brother, for she will become your wife and do not worry about the demon for this very night. She will be given to you in marriage. When you enter the bridal chamber, you will take the live ashes of incense and lay them upon some of the heart and liver of the fishes to make Make it why? Because you're going to deal with the emotions. Right. Now, what are the emotions? Is I'm afraid. You can't be afraid now because the angel of God just says it's okay. Like Susan was just told by Padre Pio to marry this interesting gentleman she's still with. Susan was scared out of her mind when she's going to marry this guy in, in Italy. Tuta, tuta. And Padre Pio said, Susan, take him, take him. He said, echo, echo, echo. Look, Susan, did you know the reason why Susan married the man she was in the Padre Pio? And so now, if we're going to, if we're going to break down everything that's our emotional craziness sometimes, go with no worries and God will take care of it. Amen? How many think you could do that? So take Sarah 
Amen. How many of Sarah might have had a complex after seven guys dropping dead on her? <laughs> Amen? Yeah. I was talking to a woman this week. She's not as bad. She was working on three. Wow. I went, wow. No, not dead. She's, she's, working, on, she's working on, an, uh, on marriages. I'm like, whoa, I got some work to do. Wow. Try to get them married in the church. Mm. When you enter the bridal chamber, you take the live ashes of incense. I don't know the incense. That's prayer. Mm. Oh, okay. yeah, and lay upon some of the heart and the liver of the fish. What's that? The emotional yes. Yeah, that's dealing with your emotions. Right, right. And you make a smoke. What's the smoke? It's the prayer going up. Then the demon will smell it and flee away and never again return. And when you approach her, rise both you and her. Cry to the merciful God. God have mercy. I mean, how many know when you got married, you should have said, God have mercy on me? Yeah. <laughs> did you do that? <laughs> when you married Larry, did you say, God have mercy on me? No way. <laughs> <laughs> when you married your husband, and did you say, Natalia, tu te merci, misericordia, Señor? <laughs> Underline that, please, verse 17. And when you approach her, rise both you and cry out to the mercy of God. He will save you and mercy on you. Do not be afraid, for she was destined from you from eternity. You will save her, and she will go with you. Now, what's the attitude is, I'll save him. I'll save her. I'll take her. Sarah will be saved. Whoa. It's Ruth again. Ruth and Boaz. Yes, Ruth and Boaz. Right. Very good. Yeah. Right. Do not be afraid. Look at verse. You will save her and she will go with you. And I will suppose that you will have children by her. Now, interesting. I told you something and we're done. Our time is up. This is the birth of the meaning of the word friend. Ooh. Friend? Friend? Ooh. When Jesus spoke to Judas in the garden and said, friend, friend means my bedroom chamber is open for you. Wow. When Gladwin was looking for that simi, he said, hark, there is simi. And then Gladwin said, in chapter 5, My love leapeth like a gazelle. <laughs> and then he, then he said, and he said, they look at Simeon and says, There you are, standing there loving me. How many think this is a marriage made in heaven? Amen. amen. She Why said amen. amen. He did not say amen. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's getting here. be continued with Raphael. Amen. Father, we just thank you. We just ask your blessing upon us as Saint Raphael leads us through a, a powerful demon that wants to destroy our marriages. So if anybody here is going through a difficult marriage, Lord, we call upon Saint Raphael and your power to destroy this demon in this marriage. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Amen